Great to open up conference play. Two of the hottest teams in the non-conference doing battle here at the Deadman Center. The Highlanders lead the all-time series 31 to 23. The two schools split the regular season series last year and the tap is controlled by Radford first possession Cole Wilder and Crystal Hubbard joining me on the broadcast right to left against the high point man to man what a great big south opener here tonight Rick high point picks seventh in the conference if this is the seventh best team then this conference is absolutely loaded and a immediate little turnaround jump shot there in a bucket for Chandler Turner good start for Radford along with Duke Miles you're going to see Trey Benham in the lineup for High Point along with Abdullah Theum, Kamani Hamilton, and Jocelyn Bodo. Bodo, we're going to talk about him as that shot is missed in the lane by Theum. Rebound by Brian Antoine. Antoine being very aggressive along the elbow is going to bounce it back out. For Radford, it's Kenyon Giles, Daquan Smith, Brian Antoine, along with Chandler Turner who made that first bucket, and Justin Archer. Minute gone by, 2-0 Radford. High points just really loaded in the starting lineup. Same lineup starting every game this season. Good inside, outside. Shot. Giles threw it down low and then a desperation heave by Antoine before the shot clock expired. Rebound by the Panthers, and this is Kamani Hamilton, a Mississippi State transfer. They get it outside, left wing. Three balls taken and missed by Benham. Offensive rebound followed no good. The ball is ricocheted off of Radford. Out of bounds. Back to the Panthers. Trey Benham really compliments his team because he's an elite shooter. He's a guy that if he gets the shot off, you have not done your job. Got to attack the glass against these guys. As you see, their big man, Bodo Bodo. Here's Hamilton, right low block. Turner blocked the first shot, but then Hamlin gets the other side and draws a foul. He'll shoot two. This team comes in averaging Cole over 41 rebounds per game. It is a potential problem spot here tonight with the way they crash the glass very aggressively and that's something that coach Huss you know brings with him from Creighton he was an assistant there for six years for Greg McDermott they nearly went to the final four last year he got a late start with this high point program trying to recruit and find players but my goodness gracious what a job he did and some of the guys that he was really counting on coming into 2023-24 haven't been available yet yeah i thought it was kind of comical as much as I, I think you know they've clearly had the strongest you know pre-conference output so far and you know in his pre-game interview he kind of felt like he was missing some guys um so if this is what he puts together with the late start rick i would hate to see him <laughs> with the what he's going to do this year or love to see if you're a high point fan two to one one of two from the line they played on the 30th they knocked off Bellarmine 90 to 85 they score a bunch over 83 points per game here's a shot by Antoine no good rebound caroms outside to Abdullah Theum the one returning starter to the high point lineup from a season ago deflected out of bounds off of Radford some quick hands on the perimeter Panthers will inbound this will be Trey Benham who's a Lipscomb transfer he was part of the all 21-22 A-Sun freshman team while he was there Rafford doing a good job in transition D so far. This is the team you have to get back on. They lead the league in scoring at 85 points a game. High point in the half court looking for their first field goal. Hamilton right baseline drive goes strong to the goal. Had it blocked, but he stayed with it. That was DeAndre Pierce, the conference's leader in block shots. You have the top two shot blockers in the Big South in this game with DeAndre Pierce and Jocelyn Bodo Bodo, but it's three to two high point. And you talked about Bodo. He's a young, raw player that you know started off the season not getting as many minutes. Now as his minutes go up, he had 15 rebounds against Georgia, and there you see him pulling one down. He's going to be a tough player as he gets more and more experience. Wild shot that time, no good from Kenyon Giles. High point in the half court, and Miles going to initiate the action and. Radford Bench thought that was going to be an offensive foul. Instead, it's called a block on the Highlanders. Yeah. This is very close here, Cole. If, if that is a block, then it's got to be well before the shot he takes a – yeah. You know what? Ball. That's a pretty good call. Yeah, I think so. I mean, looking at it, that looked like that was a good call. Scott Arbogast, Anthony Eads, and C.J. Middlebrooks, our officiating crew here on this Wednesday night, as Theum had it knocked away. Venom picks it up, however, for the Panthers. Those are the 50-50 balls Radford's going to have to get in this game. It's going to be a tight one. 
Six to shoot for high point. Benham drives to the goal. Pierce blocked it. They get the rebound, kick it outside, and the three ball no good by Theum. Another offensive rebound, and the reverse layup is good from Kamani Hamilton. And, man, he is working hard on the offensive glass. And it's a 5 nothing run for High Point. Rick, you mentioned it. You know, High Point 11 rebound differential on the season. And so far, Radford's playing pretty good defense, but it's the second chance opportunity so far. Quan left elbow. And our highlight player for Radford doing what we said he needed to do, get off to a hot start. He knocks down the three ball, and we're tied at five. And if you heard Coach Huss's, you know, pregame interview, one of his big concerns was this three-headed monster at guard for Radford. Quan Smith leading the way there with a big three. Nice play. They go back door. Beautifully done. Hamilton and Duke Miles, and he puts it up and in. Seven to five. They communicated out here. You could see them kind of give each other a little bit of a, a hand motion, and that was the motion, right? It was Hamilton hitting him back door. And he's one there. It looked like the defender just got caught, and, you know, he's hard. You can't really go under that. Antoine scoops it up, and it's blocked by Bodo Bodo, but a foul is called. So Brian Antoine from Radford will be on the line when we come back. Good start. Lots of energy as you are going to expect to lead off conference play. It's high point seven, Radford five. We're back with more after this. Stay with us. Don't go away. There's something for everyone at the Dews. Mouth-watering appetizers, a huge selection of Dews wings, burgers, and more. Bigger is better with an overstuffed menu full of overstuffed favorites, nightly specials, mouth-watering desserts, and one-of-a-kind drinks. Bring your friends, bring your family, carry out, or just get away. We'll see you at the Dews. They said nothing much would grow here, but I believed in this land. Always have, always will. It's that belief that keeps you pressing forward, and you surround yourself with people who get that, the ones who are the best at what they do. Yeah, they said nothing much would grow here. They don't say that anymore. When you combine tradition, excellence, and a world-class golf course, the Pete Dye River Course of Virginia Tech is what you get. The course is located on the scenic New River in the heart of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The layout winds along two and a half miles of the New River, featuring breathtaking views from all 18 holes. The Pete Dye River Course offers both a friendly and challenging experience for both the seasoned and average golfer. Coupled with Preston's on-site full-service restaurant, the River Course of Virginia Tech offers a truly memorable experience. Book your tea time now. 7-5, to five, Radford on the free throw line. High point, 3 of 9 from the floor. Radford, 2 of 6. They're out rebounding Radford, 8-2. to two. They've gotten 5 offensive caroms already. 5 points for Hamilton, and Radford trying to tie it on the free throw line. So far, both teams protecting the basketball. No turnovers either side. That's going to be vital here tonight, Cole. It's been something that Darius Nichols has really, really focused on, making sure that this team protects the basketball. And ever since they had that red-on-red -red scrimmage a few weeks ago, they seem to have been message sent, message received. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things we talked about earlier on the season was Rafford had that negative assist-to-turnover ratio. Well, they're in the positives. You know, the last couple games, they've got it up barely above positive. A, a point guard like Coach Nichols would probably really like to see that thing be two-to-one. But they are taking better care of the ball. But you mentioned it. If, if they don't do a better job on the defensive glass, this is going to be a long night because five offensive rebounds before the first media timeout is tough. Free throw by Antoine. He's a 92% free throw shooter. He was at 91% last year. His first year as a Highlander, former five-star recruit, went to Villanova. He's battled lots of injuries throughout his career, and he makes one of two from the line, a rare miss from the charity stripe. Seven to six is the Panthers' rebound. They lead by one. Yeah, that's something you don't see a lot. He's shooting over 90% from the free throw line. Here's Hamilton left side. He's been very busy on the glass so far. They send out a new player, Cade Potter, from Utah State. He's a sophomore. Where's number 10 in the road purple? Here's Miles along the left elbow. Skip pass right side. Three ball was in the air and short from Hamilton. Archer battling for the rebound, and it's out of bounds off of Justin. 
back to high point. Archer was not available for the game at Clemson. He was battling a slight aggravation in his lower body, but he's back, and boy, Radford needs him tonight. Kyle Burns into the game for Radford. Here's a long three, and it's rattled in, and that is Duke Miles, and that's what he's been doing all season long his first year at high point. I mean, and that's just wild because that's the most common underneath out of bounds play. The inbounder gets a down screen to the corner. Nice take there by Truth Harris. Truth Harris did a nice job there getting down low and reversing it. And he'll have a chance at an old fashioned three point play. We've seen Truth earn more and more minutes as he has gone on here his first year. Transfer coming in for Radford. He's Truth quick, Harris. That was actually a tougher finish than it looked. You know, he's a little off balance there. Again, his ability to go from 0 to 100 is elite, his speed. He was way off there on the free throw. Free throw is no good. Hyler's struggling from the line early. It's 10 to 8. Just over five minutes have gone by. And an illegal screen going to be called. Benham. And that's what Daquan Smith likes to do. He likes to take pride in his defense. And... Yeah, and on, on the previous possession, there was a good flare screen set. This one is way too hard in his move, and he does definitely lean into it there. 10 to 8, high point by 2. Raptor looking to tie it or take the lead here with a 3. Crossover by Truth along the elbow. Kyle Burns, redshirt freshman. Now Antoine controlling the ball between the circles against Benham. Step back three ball is up Man. and good. And there's the lead. Top of the circle. And that's the other aspect we need to see from Radford's Brian Antoine call in, the, in this conference schedule. He's got to start looking for that offense. I mean, that's just an incredible level of difficulty on that shot. Pretty good defense there by Benham. But Brian Antoine with just a better shot. Here's Miles over to Benham, left wing, and Antoine blocked the three ball. It's taken by Quan into the basket. And I was just about to say, I thought Brian Antoine had helped too much, but what a great closeout. Quan going to the goal and muscling it up. You know, he's such a strong, thick guard, too, to go along with that quickness. 13 to 10, Radford up by three. You see Coach Nichols yelling, get back, get back. No time to celebrate in this game. Hamilton skip pass. Miles sets up another three, and he's hit two now, one on either side. And we are tied at 13. Duke Miles comes in, leading scorer on this team, second in the conference, and he can do it in a variety of ways. His, his stats just are unreal. 58% from the field as a guard is, you know, typically you see that out of your big post players. Here's a long three, and Quan! is answering wow shots falling from everywhere outside the three-point line Daquan Smith off to the hot start miles goes in loses the handle it's picked up by truth Harris speeding down the far sideline Quan looking for the ball being very aggressive goes to the goal and lays it in and the Radford lead is up to five at 1255 to go in the half big time run here from Radford See if they can keep getting stops. You don't want to trade baskets. Here's Miles muscling his way in, and he flips it up, and it's good. And he's on a roll now, 18 to 15, as he is scoring again from all over early in this basketball game. He, he just made that look like an easy play. He was just outside. Oh, goodness. Theum reaches in, and he's going to have a steal and a breakaway, oh. but he misses the layup. Looked like maybe he got caught in between trying to dunk it and laying it up softly on the rim, and it cost him a break for Radford. We approach the 12-minute mark. Man, this has been a high-octane start. It's been a track meet, a controlled track meet, if you will. You see some fatigue. Here's Quan spinning on Theum. Nowhere to go, and his pass is tipped away. Radford will have it, but only two to shoot when we come back with 11.57 to go. It's like a pinball machine here at the Deadman Center. Unfortunately, the students are still out for break, or this place would really be rocking tonight. Radford 18, high point 15, back with more of this big conference opener after this. Okay, when you turn around, you're going to see someone. You have a turkey and cheese. 
Let's imagine that LL Cool J has a bubble around him. Do we want to be hey, I'm Keith. Oh. There are some situations that young homeowners turning into their parents just can't handle. Yeah, there he is. There's my nephew. Now, I got a video of him uh, playing piano. That's not how you take a selfie. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto with us. Three, two, one. We don't need a countdown. Just take the picture. As they continue through this game, they want to make sure when the ball gets in, the person scores, or they're able to kick it out to someone who can get a good shot. All right, Crystal. Good report as always. And there you saw Chandler Turner. He'd kind of forgotten for a second. There were only two seconds on the clock, so he had to just turn and fire one from long distance. It was off the mark. His high point rebounds. And this is Keza Jiffa, a Daytona State transfer. He's been really good for Coach Huss. Heck. They, they've all been. They've all, they've been, all good. been really good. They've all been good. He goes into the lane, kicks it off left side. Another three ball is taken in short this time from Titus Sargunas, and the ball goes out of bounds off of whom? Mm. But to go back to High Point. And you're looking at it. You're, you're saying Duke Miles is scoring 18 points a game. How has Radford allowed him to already have 10? Don't you have some type of game plan? Well, High Point has five players that are scoring in double figures, so it's not like you can. You know, just send a lot of extra help because they're good across the floor. Quan Smith and Miles each with 10 points to lead all game scorers. Hamilton left open, left elbow. Looked like he didn't have his feet set on the three and turned to rebound. Trenton Walters, the freshman, running the point now for Radford. Where's number two in the home whites? Turner. He likes this matchup with Miles. He's very physical, gets in the lane, misses. There's Archer on the left side, putting it back up and in. And that's how that young man has made his living since he joined this Radford team. Yeah, he's just highly efficient. He makes the good play when it's there. Justin, Justin Bodo Bodo went a little bit too hard on the block there. Nobody came down to box Archer. 20 to 15, turnaround jump shot off the mark. And Radford battling for the rebound. Sargunas has come off the bench. He's a freshman from Lithuania. Played on the club Lithuanian first division team over the summer. That's their highest division. So he's got a lot of international experience. Very aggressive since he came in as miles away inbound for Coach Huss's squad. 20 to 15. Bodo Bodo with a jump hook. Left it short, gets his own rebound, and scores. And there's been a lot of that in this first half for High Point. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's a good, he's just going to be, by the time we get to the conference tournament, Bodo Bodo is going to be an absolute force. Tell you what, he's got a good body, doesn't he, for a seven-footer? I mean, he's got a really good physical frame for a guy that tall. Here's Walters into the lane, drew the double team. They kick it left corner to Antoine, and he'll rattle home the three. Radford shooting well from distance so far in this basketball game. Another one of the keys for them. Four or five now. Miles off balance. That's a tough shot. And there you see, you know, again, that's Bodo Bodo. He doesn't pull it down, but he keeps the ball alive. He's done that on a couple possessions now. Radford's going to have to clear him out of there. 23-17. This is the largest lead for Radford in this first half. Six points. Substitutions all around here as Giles back out for Radford. Turner, Quan Smith return. Walter stays out there and Justin Archer. Conference road games, the toughest thing to do in collegiate sports is win road conference games. There's a three ball. And that is Jiffa. 23 to 20. And that's the exact same underneath out of bounds that Miles got earlier. And Radford not chasing on that. They're trying to jump the passing lane. Jiffa shoots just under 40% from three, so he's got that touch. 9-15 and a half, 23 to 20, Radford. Here's Walters out to Kenyon Giles. He's been quiet so far in this game. Hasn't dotted the scoreboard until now. He must have been listening. He must have borrowed Crystal's earphones there. And he I laid it up and in. I think the box score there should show two points for you, Rick, or at least <laughs> split it. One for Giles, one for you. Uh, Benham out front. Sargunas with the basketball. <laughs> Jiffa, oh, he found some space, and that one pinballed out. They're going to call that on Archer. Yep, he kind of tossed Bodo, Bodo to the ground. 
And he, he's trying, again, motor, I love his, his energy, his motor. Again, we're talking about Justin Archer, the guy who's leading the Big South in rebounds right now, one of the best rebounders we've seen here at Radford. And Bodo Bodo is making it very difficult on him tonight. 25-20, Radford on top, 8.41 to go. The Big South opener here on this Wednesday across the league. Here's Theum catching out front. The one holdover from their starting lineup last year, and he was a good scorer last year. He's been a really good scorer this year for Coach Huss, averaging 12 points per game, and we just saw why. 25-22. I mean, Rick, they really are good across the board. You know, they don't really have a, a weak spot that I see. The, the best I could find in looking at their stats is that they struggle defending against the three-point. They're last in the conference in three-point defense, which may be why we're seeing Radford shoot lights out tonight. Pierce, a little jump hook for him. It rimmed off. Bodo kind of controlled that to Jiffa. He has it along the right wing. 25-22. Sargunas out front holds it at his hip. Sargunas out to Jiffa with 15 to shoot. Next whistle takes us to the under eight media timeout. Benham along the right side. He'll step back for three in the tie. Missed it. And the ball sails out of bounds. And Benham was frustrated. He wasn't really squared the hoop for that long jumper. 740 on the clock. Radford 25 and high point 22. We'll be back. We'll hear from Crystal Hubbard coming out of the timeout as well. Highlanders by three. Stay with us. Alone, chicken, onions, peppers, and cheese have potential. Together, they have a purpose, a destiny, and a name. Because grilled to order makes a sub above. This is a story about strength. It wakes up early in the morning, stays up late, moves mountains, and travels the world. It makes adventure and hard work possible. Strength delivers food to tables, packages to doorsteps, products to stores, and kids to practice. It shows up everywhere you show up. Hercules tires are built for almost every driver and every vehicle. Find the right Hercules for your story and let our strength drive yours. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we try and educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. I'm thirsty. Try this. Start. It's a new lemon lime soda that's crisp, clear, and so refreshing. So tasty. What the? Just let it happen. He was a soda. New Starry Lemon Lime Soda. It's different. If our turkey had a resume, it would... In the Big South Conference, he had 10 points against Bellarmine in their last game on nine rebounds. You know, the coaching staff on the Raptors events were not happy with the rebounds in this game so far. He's been a reason why they're not happy about it. He's had five rebounds so far in this game only in the first quarter. Mm. First half. Here's Quan continuing his heart's, uh, hot start. Quan Smith hasn't missed a shot. He's got 12 points, and it's 27-22. Again, we keyed on him for a reason, Cole, in the pregame. He is that guy. He reminds me a lot of, well, here I go, Cole, ready for an NBA reference that I've done before. Old Detroit Piston fans know about Vinnie Johnson, the microwave. He can heat up any time, and that's exactly what Daquan Smith is for Radford. Usually the Vinnie Johnson comparisons don't come out. But, whoa. Oh, he Long almost hit it. Three did. I mean, that was a pretty good look for Hamilton with the shot clock winding down. But there was, I think it was four seconds left. That was a little too deep and a little too early. Kenyon Giles went left, went right. Then he bunny hopped it up and in. And Radford now has expanded their lead to seven, 29-22. Kenyon Giles is like an artist in the way he scores. You know, he is just very creative. If he's stuck, he finds a way to get out of it. 
Here's a long three by Benham. You know, he was frustrated a moment ago. He didn't like the look that he had, but he's a terrific shooter. He nails that one. He's shooting 43% from behind the line. And with that, you got to have a hand up there. If he has the ball and can get the shot off, you did not do your job. He's that good. Hit seven threes, I believe, against UNCG. Quan trying to stay wow. hot, and he hits it again. He answers with his own three. Are you kidding me, Daquan Smith? 32-25. Of course, he was the hero in Morgantown, hitting oh, the shot still. at the buzzer. Knocked away, and here come the Highlanders. Up by seven. Truth Harris along the right wing for Radford. 5.38 to go. And Daquan Smith going absolutely nuts out here for the Highlanders. He's got 15. Indian Giles into the lane, step back, jump shot, <laughs> rolls around and in. <laughs> and again, the more difficult and as odd as it looks, the more successful it is for Kenyon Giles. <laughs> you're I mean, just laughing. Time, you kind of look at that possession and you're like, that is the worst possession. But you just, KG, as the shot clock is winding down, finds a way to get buckets. Three balls off the mark and look at Quan hustling. My goodness. Uh, He's all over the floor. He's going to get called for the foul. But, boy, you really yeah. love to see that from Daquan Smith. I don't like that call. You know, it looks like two guys just going after the ball. Must he, he might have been holding them on the other side. See this again. You got a guy who's got 15 points. Watch Daquan Smith sell out going after this loose yeah. basketball. 50-50. Yeah, I don't know about that one. He did kind of grab him on his, got bent him on the left arm. Fourth team foul against Radford. High point in the half court, down by eight. Oh, reaching. Ooh, that looked, that looked close. Is that two on KG? Pablo Zuba is out there. He's been injured. Maryland transfer. You know, Coach Huss happy to get him back. Walter's going to replace Kenyon Giles. 4.51 in the half. 33-25. Radford on top. Strong three-point shooting thus far for the Highlanders. Theum catches, lays it up, and off. But I think Quan lost the ball, didn't he? Yep, he did. It'll go back to high point. And it's just, again, give credit to high point on the way they're crashing the glass, which is making it hard for Rafford spending so much effort and energy trying to box. It's hard to go after the ball. High point will inbound. Throwing it out front to Theum. Theum into the lane, goes to the goal, and he's going to draw another foul. That's three straight fouls against Radford. That's something High Point's good at. Yep, they get to the line. We they, mentioned it's yep. 16th in the country. And they're good when they get there. They've had 384 free throw attempts. Radford, Ooh. conversely, just 240. So they've outscored Radford by 170 from the line alone. That is an incredible stat right there. And Theum, the veteran of this lineup, puts it up and in, and it's 33-26. Uh, that wasn't a three a moment ago. I gave him an extra point. They went back. It's 33-26. Next free throw is up and good. He's been a terrific player for a high point. Minnesota transfer, Indian State Community College. 33-27. Walters into the lane, gets oh, to nice the goal, block. but it is blocked. Last line of defense pretty solid that time from Zuba. And they get a layup chance on the other end. They missed it. Hamilton battling hard. It's going to draw another foul, and that's team foul number seven. We see why they get to the line, right? They work so hard on the glass. They just keep coming, coming after misses, and... You're a little bit late. You're going to get called for the foul. I, mean, I love their mentality. As soon as they shoot the ball, you just see guys crashing. And they're you're not really necessarily going after. They're just crashing to the rim, which is putting a lot of pressure on Radford. 33-27, 4-19 to go. Is Hamilton, the Mississippi State transfer, on the line. And he makes the first. Truth Harris and DeAndre Pierce checking back in for the Highlanders. 
How about the rebound margin right now? It's plus 14 for High Point. Well, it was a problem against Clemson. Ratcher was out-rebounded by the most they've been out-rebounded in any game since they became a Division I team. Clemson out-rebounded them 45-13. to 13. Of course, they didn't miss a lot of shots. 33-29. As High Point has chipped away now, and they're within four. Here. Harris from right to left. So far, Radford's really a lot on elite shot making. It'd be nice to see them get an easy bucket. It's been perimeter driven so far until now. Truth goes in, but he misses it, and they're going to call Archer for a push. And Darius Nichols just stands over at the scorer's table. Not happy with that call. Radford picking up fouls now in bunches. 3.58 to go, 33-29. Radford on top. It's the Big South opener here tonight from the Deadman Center with the students still on vacation. We'll be back with more of our coverage right after this. The warp rift is expected. On the bench, they're going to look a small lineup against this high point team, which is bigger and also winning the rebounding margin right now. Benham on the line. This team, by the way, for the year, 76% from the free throw line. They lead the conference in scoring and free throw shooting. Second one's no good. It goes out of bounds. Off of high point, 33 to 30. This Creighton type of offense that Alan Huss brings to high point un under the tutelage of Greg McDermott at Creighton. They like to think, pass, dribble, and shoot. They need big men who can initiate the offense, handle the ball at the top of the key. And we've seen all that tonight. Here's Quan floating in. Missed that one, his first miss. Rebound by Benham as the Panthers are making a big run. Miles back out there. Oh, oh my goodness no gracious. Way. Now that is a very late call on DeAndre Pierce. Okay, that, I, he called it on Kyle Burns there. Maybe Burns got him a little earlier. Yeah, let's see that again. Maybe it was before the block. It certainly wasn't on the block. Uh, I think uh, it's Burns, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Didn't. Well, we just talked about it coming out of the break. They're right back on the line. And the free throw is good. And it's 33-31. Radford right now, you're shooting 60% from the field and you're only up two. You got to get stops. You got to defend without fouling. The throw is good again. And just like that, it's a one point basketball game. High point right now on a 7 0 run. 320 to go. Burns outside to Harris. Driving the goal, Harris in a late whistle oh, wow. and an offensive foul. Every whistle going against the home team right now. And this will give High Point the ball back and an opportunity to take the lead. I'll tell you what, Rapper's going to need to get a stop here. Let's look at it. And that is not a good call. Just looking at it, you can see the defender still kind of stepping in underneath. Truth Harris. I think you maybe could have gone with a no call there. I certainly wouldn't call it. Yeah, an absolutely. Foul. Absolutely. High point looking with the lead, trying to extend their 7 0 run. And the off balance jump shot is good for Duke Miles. And high point has come all the way back on the road to lead 34 33. And I'll tell you what, Miles is good. We've seen him drive to the rim. We've seen him hit a couple. Oh, and here he is on the defensive end. Careless pass by Harris. Miles goes up wow. and reverses it up and in. And Radford's going to need a timeout. That was incredible. I think he took off. 2.33 to go. And it's now an 11-0 run for the Panthers. They lead 36-33. And how quickly did this game turn around, Cole? Yeah, and I want you to watch this. He takes off on this steal from the opposite block and is able to reverse the ball. Watch this. Opposite block gets to the other side. I mean, that is an incredible play. But again, high points composure. Radford has hit some crazy shots, and they never let their guard down. They just got the ball back and went and scored. And again, it started with their ability to get to the free throw line. And, you know, 
two minutes here, if, if Bradford can't stop this run, they could be facing a much bigger deficit than this going into half. Bradford's going to have to get their composure and get a stop. It feels like they've allowed the whistles to get into their head a little bit. Crystal just talked about it, right, that Coach Nichols was trying to say, look, don't worry about the fouls, but I think it's more difficult. It's easier said than done when it just keeps happening. Ten to four, the difference. They're in the double bonus. High point still has two to give. They can be very aggressive defensively. Here down the stretch of this first half with 2.17 to go. Quan goes in. Hamilton cut him off. Burns catches it right side. Miles on him, and then Kyle Burns turns it over. Miles on the floor trying to wrestle it away. Ratcher, they do tie it up. Possession arrow, though, will give it back to high point. And again, the energy right now is all high point. Somebody on Raffer is going to have to step up and make a play here to cut this energy because High Point's got a couple possessions left. And the way they're playing, I expect them to get some buckets right here. The intangibles right now siding with the guys in purple. And we've seen every bit why they're 11 and 4, right? And if you look at this, they have two shooters in the corner, both guys that can score. Jeff into the lane, and yep. he's going to get fouled. And again, they can be aggressive. They're getting the the calls because they're being aggressive, and they know how to draw them. It's something that Coach Huss has clearly brought with him from Creighton, and these are just good plays. That was just a good, smart play yep. to get the much taller post player to commit. It's a good aggressive play. And Jiffa makes the free throw. The run continues for high point. They've now scored 12 straight points. And while the, the fouls are lopsided again, you know, it's not like these are bad calls for the most part. High point's just been the more aggressive team. Rafford's pretty much relied on, you know, tough shot making as opposed to getting to the rim. High point's done a better job of attacking. When you are the attacking team, you're going to um, definitely get more calls. 38-33, Jiffa knocks them both down. 13 straight points by the Panthers. Radford needs a hoop. Walters out front, Turner. Foul starting to mount up. Cole mentioned it. Turner back out there. He has to come back out with the two fouls. Walters left side to Antoine. Tough turnaround jumper is good for Brian. That ends the 13-0 run. Radford's down three, 38-35. It's a good shot there by Brian Antoine. I'm just, again, a bit concerned. Radford's pretty much relying on tough shots every possession. And now an illegal screen, an offensive foul against High Point. And you can see Coach Huss, he's not mad at the call. He is letting his guy have it there. Oh, he's the got Zuba. on him a couple times. Yeah. In other words, he agreed with the call. He's talking to him as he brings him off the floor. Trenton Walters, dangerous pass that's tipped back beyond the logo. Turner has to retrieve. A minute to go in the half, 38-35. Walters to Turner. CT glides in that's and good. scores. 38-37, Chandler Turner, the Bowling Green transfer, having a great year here at Radford. Hey, Brian Antoine and Chandler Turner with back-to-back -back good plays. Oh, might have been a little carry there. Here's Jiffa left side. Nice feed down low. The dunk is missed, though, by Bodo Bodo. And then a foul going to be called? No, I think they just called goaltending. Goaltending. Offensive goaltending. Offensive goaltending. So Radford now with a chance to retake the lead. 37.4 to go. What a really fun first half this has been we knew it was going to be this way conference opener tonight for radford and high point in the big south it just changes everything yeah two teams that are they both have the expectation that they're going to make it to the conference championship they both think they have a chance trenton walters just going to dribble here 13 to shoot five and a half second difference or so between the two clocks <laughs> Walters with five to shoot out to Turner. He's going to have to let it go. Chandler step back jump shot for the lead. No. Don't foul. Don't foul. Don't foul. Rebound picked up by Hamilton. High point. Looking for the extra points here at the buzzer, but no good from Hamilton. And this first half that saw 
A lot of different emotions ends with High Point on top 38 to 37. Radford down by one. This, but they have come from in the paint. Rebounding, Radford's getting out rebounded 26 to nine so far in this game. So they're really not winning that battle in turnovers. Radford actually surprisingly only has four turnovers so far in this game and they're tied with High Point. They have held their own, taking care of the basketball. First shot of the second half is off the mark from Daquan Smith. This Theum rebounds for High Point, 38-37, just getting underway. Half number two, and there's Miles. The game's leading score was 16 at the top of the circle. Pretty good offensive possession there for Radford, just not able to convert. Yeah, it wasn't a bad shot hand at up, all, was it? Up. Here's Benham into the lane. A little head fake, and he laid it up and in. And High Point's expanded their lead to 40 to 37. Trey Benham is a kid, again, who transferred in from Lipscomb. And the Panthers lead by three. He's impressed me. You know, you, you, when you look at the stats, you think, oh, he's a great shooter, but he does a lot more, to, more than that. He's very tough. He's been aggressive on the defensive end, and there you see him with a tough offensive move, tough, strong, physical move. Theum called for the foul. It's interesting watching Alan Huss with the whistles against his team. He's not questioning the officials at all. He's immediately talking to the player who was whistled for the foul. I know, I've seen him get on a couple of his guys so far. Yeah, he's looking. He's using it as a teaching moment, isn't he? Yeah, I, I love that mentality. Here's Quan free top of the circle. He's a little leaning into that shot. Shot it hard, and there is Bodo Bodo with oh, the wow. rebound. They go back door to Theum for the layup. And he, that's just falling asleep in transition. That possession was four seconds long. When High Point gets a defensive rebound, you have to get back. There's no time. No time for bad body language. No time to be down on yourself. You have to find your guy and get to the lane. 42-37. Giles bounce pass to Turner. He went left, turned right. The jumper rolls through. And Lord Turner's got that feathery soft touch. Three-point game. I think they like that matchup with Benham on him. Just a little bit of a height advantage for Chandler Turner there. Right elbow. Hamilton has it. Skip pass left side to Miles. Left open. He's going to fire a long three. Shot it strong. And wow. And Bodo, Bodo, <laughs> I don't think he meant to, but it deflects <laughs> off his arm and in. He's smiling running down the floor. Counts the same. It's 44-39. And again, I, like you said, he didn't mean to score that, but again, just his extra effort getting his hand on the ball whenever he can. They own the glass. Absolutely. I mean, they just absolutely have put down a house payment on either end of the floor on the backboard because it's theirs. Radford's got to change that if they're going to have any shot. Turner in there, rolls it in. Chandler's gotten a couple of soft jumpers to fall, keeping them around 44-41. That was another possession with that Bodo Bodo tip where Radford played pretty good defense, but just, oh goodness. Theum left elbow misses the three. And Quan rebounds for the Highlanders. He's going to go into the lane, draw contact, no whistle, but the shot rolled in. Probably a pretty good no call there, and the lead is down to one, 44-43. Quan Smith has been very aggressive this night again. like to see that going into conference play. Miles. Turner kept his feet. Good defense by Chandler. He never left his feet. Didn't foul. Got the rebound, and Radford looking for the lead. Turner along the left side. He's gotten off to a hot start in the second half. He's going to shoot it over miles a little strong that time as Bodo Bodo rebounds. Good idea there. And look how quick high point is on the other end, already in their offense. Theum into the lane. Short tap. Bodo Bodo's got it. Loses it the second time. They get it again. Benham's going to pull up and hit the jumper. I mean... <laughs> High point is just absolutely bullying Radford on the offensive glass. There's no other way to put it. Radford's actual half-court defense has been great, I think. Just can't come down with the board. Next whistle takes us to the under-16 media, 46-43. Kenyon Giles out front. Goes down low. Archer had his shot. May have been blocked by Bodo Bodo. Goes out of bounds to Radford when we come back. 15.40 to go. High point. 
has expanded their halftime lead of one to three, 46-43. And we'll be back with more of our coverage from the Dedman Center after this Big South Conference opening night on a Wednesday. There's not a secret to what actually happens. Getting the job done, he can reach over top and still pull that rebound. Uh, some of the focus was also on Justin Archer, one of the better rebounders on the team, as you know. He's been expected, he's been challenged to be that in this game. Long jump shot at the shot clock buzzer by Turner, and that time we had the foul going to be called. Underneath on the Panthers, I believe Benham called for the infraction. Yet a follow-up on Crystal's point. How about Justin Archer called just one rebound in this game? Well, he made up for it right there. That was him crashing the glass, drew the hold call again. You don't always have to get the rebound, but you do have to go after it. That's kind of separated high point from Radford. 15.32 to go. Kenyon Giles going to trigger the inbounds here for the Highlanders. Deontre Pierce back out there. Here's Turner up top to KG. Giles, six points so far. Theum on him with five with four. He's got to keep it and launch a three for the tie, and it's good. Kenyon Giles hits the head of the key jump shot, and we're even once again at 46 now. Kenyon Giles and Daquan Smith are just hitting some crazy shots. Brian Antoine had one earlier. And not really bad defense there, just a better shot from Giles. Jiffa gets it down low. Back outside the Jiffa, two-man game, and he hits the three. He's done that quite often tonight when they need one, right? He's got two one from distance. He's got eight points now in the game, and it's... 49-46. And high point, they're just, they're loaded. They have weapons everywhere. Jiffa, another one that fits into that mix. Antoine, been quiet for a while offensively. He misses again. And another rebound for the Panthers. Outlet pass to Jiffa left side. He goes right to the teeth of yeah. the defense. And Antoine stays his ground. Not a good idea to go up against the best on ball and off ball defender, I think, in the Big South Conference, Brian Antoine. Yeah, and that's a good play there by Brian Antoine. Not going to count as a steal, but he certainly forced that turnover. A little hobbled there. Is he a little cramped maybe going over to stretch it out? Yep. Somebody that they need at full strength going down to the wire in this game. Quan Smith back out there. Archer working hard. Flips it up. No good with the left hand. And a rebound by Theum. Panthers on the run. Miles going to take it right to the goal and get fouled by Quan. He'll shoot two. Miles just had the mindset he was going to get to the basket, and it pays off with free throws. How about him on the other end guarding Justin Archer, who's a pretty good offensive player down low, pretty strong. There you see it. Yeah. Pretty good call. That's a call. Just very difficult, right, against that guy. He's a lot like Daquan Smith in terms of being physical and very quick once he gets in there to the lane. He's been a great addition to this high point program. There's no doubt he's second in the conference in scoring, and he'll knock down the free throw. And it's a four point basketball game, 50 to 46, as Truth Harris going to replace Chandler Turner. Radford loses a little bit of size with that substitution. You know, Duke Miles has to love it here, love his role, because he's surrounded by other strong players. So if you're scouting high point, you really can't throw too much extra help at him just because there's other weapons there. So when you're a strong player like him, you love that. They continue to get to the line and make their free throws, and that's their M.O. 51-46, five-point lead. They went 8-0 at home in the non-conference. They only won one true road game going for their second tonight. There's an air ball on the three and a smart play, boy. Duke Miles, strong basketball acumen. Knew he couldn't stay in bounds. We just threw that right off the ankles of DeAndre Pierce, and they have an extra possession because of it. And his partner, Kamani Hamilton, with a great contest on that three-point shot. Actually blocked it, I believe. Miles right side, there is Hamilton. Offensively, he's been quiet, but he's going to draw another foul. You know, Cole, you've watched him now for 27 minutes almost. I mean, 
they are definitely schooled with how to be able to get fouls, aren't they, the way they attack the goal. Yeah, they're a north-south type of team. They're not going to hit you with a bunch of moves and, you know, trying to finesse their way through a shot. They're going to make one or two moves and put their head down and get to the rim. And because of that, they are drawing fouls. Now you see Kamani Hamilton with the most simple move in basketball, just a jab hey, to the right and drop. A 35-12 to 12 <laughs> rebounding advantage. That's, that's incredible for high point. And they're starting to spread it out now. Their largest lead is seven points. And Radford's got to be careful right now because this is one of those times where you're not getting extra chances on the offensive end. And I think Thiem's called for a hold here. And once again, Coach Huss yeah. goes right to Thiem and says, where are your hands? It's just not a smart one there. But you're right, Rick. If Radford does not start getting stops, they're going to be in trouble. This is not a high point team that you're going to be able to close a big deficit late in the game. Not with the way they rebound and get to the line. Here's Giles. They come out on him. KG working hard, and I think he got held again. And now that's the fourth foul on the Panthers. Jiffa called for that one. See if Radford can get something good here on the underneath out of bounds. Harris lob play out front to Quan Smith's got 16. He's got 18. Gets to the goal with the right hand. And boy, Radford needed that. 53-48. The Panthers lead is five. Quan Smith doing a good job of using his strength and quickness, but also being under control. Jeffa. Answers immediately. Cole, how many times have we seen uh, just an immediate answer by High Point after a Radford basket? Yeah, I think that's just their that's their their mentality. No no excuses. Next play, let's go get a bucket. And Jeff has done it a couple times. Ah, uh, ball deflected. Turner or Trey actually tried to keep that alive. He does. Radford will have 11 to shoot here. 12-13 to go, and Bodo Bodo back out there. 55-48, Panthers on top. Inbounds play comes up top to Quan Smith. Juan Bodo Bodo just stood his ground, and the shot clock's going to run out. That's just good defense right there from Jocelyn Bodo Bodo. You know, it's, it's, it's a discipline thing, right, to stand there with that long wingspan with your arms in the air and not foul, and that's what Quan ran into. I and mean, then I think Duke Miles is able on the other, other side of that equation, is able to apply a little bit more pressure because he knows he has Bodo Bodo behind him. When you have mm -hmm. a big rim protector like that, you can get a little tighter because – if you do get beat, you know you have help inside. Hamilton lost the handle, picks it up. Theum left elbow for three, no good. Look at Bodo. I mean, again, he didn't get the board there, but just his aggression trying to rebound. Foul now going to be called on the Panthers. Rafford that time had good position for the ball, and they earned a foul. 55-48, 11.43 to go. Panthers on top. We're back with more of our coverage from the Deadman Center after this. High point up by seven on the road. <laughs> Playing harder than they are. And you, you've seen it on the 50-50 balls. You've seen it on the turnovers. You know, a high point keeps coming up with the ball and making the shot. So, obviously, Coach wants to see his team scrap a little bit more. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell, isn't it? Blocking foul there on Theum. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell, Cole. And it, what Crystal said, that's what Coach said going. That's what he told her going in the locker room. They're just playing harder. And there's not much, you know, you can draw up to fix that. It just kind of comes down to a couple guys stepping up and setting the tone. Kenyon Giles inbounds to Turner. He's going to lay it in and a late whistle. Now that's going to be the seventh foul. So roles have been reversed here in the second half. It's the Highlanders that have a chance here to 
step to the free throw line to pick up some points. Good work there by Turner. Is already over the limit are the Panthers after this foul. Oh, nice slip there on the underneath out of bounds. Rapper gets a lot of those slips. 55-51. Chandler Turner's been really good in this second half. He's now got 11 points, joining Daquan Smith as the Radford players in double figures. As the Panthers, they've had an answer, though. Radford going to a zone here, trying to slow him down a little bit. 2-3. Tell you what, you better find Ben Amaro. There he is. They got him in the corner. I mean, that is. And he knocks it down. That's textbook, that's isn't it? That's unexcusable. You know, you have an elite three-point shooter. You switch to zone, and you better believe when they switch to zone, they say, we're going to find this guy, and the first time he tried, he gets a wide-open three. Cole saw him in the corner. And what do we have here? We have no call. Nobody saw anything, and they're going to give it the ball to high point. They deferred to the third official over across the floor. And again, I think that's the right call. That Bodo Bodo just had a higher mo higher motor trying to beat Pierce to the spot. High point's been very impressive. You see why they set a record. It's amazing what Coach Huss is doing here in year one. 11 non-conference wins. They go back door to miles. That time too strong on the reverse. Laquan Smith on the run out for Radford goes in and a blocking foul going to be the call. And now he'll be on the line. That's eight team fouls against High Point. And Radford's having no issues on the offensive no, end. Just, they no. just can't get stops on the other end. You mentioned that any time Radford has a bucket or it looks like they're trying to go on a run, High Point just answers and shuts it down. Radford's going to run out of time here soon. 19 now for Daquan Smith. He's 8 of 11 from the floor, 58-52. Ten thirty-seven left. And he makes them both. And with those free throws, Highlanders starting to get to the line more now. UNC Asheville has the first final of the Big South Conference schedule. They knock off Upstate ninety-five to sixty-seven. And Drew Pember twenty-two points in the conference opener. Asheville's a team that struggled in non-conference play, but you just you know come this time they're going to get it rolling. Good save by Benham at half court. And yep, they get it down low, and there it is with Duke Miles controlling his body right and call. laying it up and in, and now there's an and one. That's just a terrific play by the Troy transfer. There's just That's just really, really good stuff by Miles. Yeah, he did the same thing on the other end in the first half. Again, just that patience, that pump fake. Gets his man in the air, and then he draws the contact. If you're Radford, you can't complain about fouls this half because it's 8-3. to three. He's got 20. And the free throw is good. He's got 21. And it's 61-53. High point leading now by 8 points. And this is their new largest lead of the game. Here's Giles right side would tend to shoot little step back baseline jumpers. No good and Bodo Bodo got fouled. I believe by Pierce. No, they're going to call the jump ball, but it'll still be high points basketball. Cole water. Have we seen Brian Antoine since he went off the floor with those cramps? I have not seen him come back into the game or did I miss a no, substitution? I, I think you're correct. He has not been back in which again is He's It's really hard. If, if it you're is. trying to get stops, it is. you know as good as he is on offense, he's far better on defense, which is pretty impressive because he's good on offense, but he's an elite defender. Not having him out there is is hard. Yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the little leg machine going on over there on the bench. 61-53. High point trying to open up a double-digit lead, and Riffa goes one. in and one. My goodness gracious. So many weapons. The lead is 10 with 9.39 to go. Another old-fashioned three-point opportunity. And High Point's feeling it now. They're having fun out there. They're confident, again, which is scary. Usually when you have a team that's kind of composed like this, a new coach comes in, there's a bunch of transfers. Usually it takes till later in conference play for things to really click, but it's kind of scary that things are clicking this early for this team. They are, you know, 
as the other Big South teams finish up their game and go look at the scores and watch film, they are going to be a little scared about this high point team. And Jeff up, completes the three-point play, and the Panthers are now spreading it out. They lead by 11, 64, 53, with nine and a half minutes to go, and Islanders need to buckle down on this end, the half court. Trenton Walters now running the point. Okay. Antoine off the screen, misses the three. Antoine back in, getting the shot right away. Yeah, he sat for about six minutes and immediately comes in and fires a long three. There's a lot of time left, Rick, but you just kind of have the feeling that if <laughs> Bradford doesn't string together a bunch of stops right now, they're not going to have a shot late. And an offensive foul going to be called on Bodo Bodo. He's not complaining. And a turnover gives it back to Radford. That's the ninth foul against the Panthers. That means it's going to be double bonus for Radford here on out. 8.58 to go, 64-53. And that's how Coach Huss is talking to the officials. He didn't like that one. And the way he has not been talking to him, you, <laughs> you probably believe him because he's not one that has complained a lot this game. Walters along the right wing. Down to Daquan nice Smith. Move. His strong game continues, but somebody's got to help him out. He's got 22. 64-55. Juan Smith, 22 points against Northern Colorado. 24 points is his career high. There you go. Here's your chance if you're a rapper. You got a media timeout coming up. You got to get a stop. And but they do not guy. because Jiffa hits another rainmaker. And it's a dagger. 67 55. I mean, Jiffa is just. Keza Jiffa from Daytona State College. And the lead is ballooned to 12 for the High Point Panthers. Very impressive bunch. From North Carolina coming into Radford tonight. And let's remind you, Jeff is a guy that they have coming off the bench, so that's how deep they are. Quan misses the jumper, and the ball goes off, they say, of Turner. Ooh, that was close, but nonetheless. And all those little bounces have gone against Radford tonight for the most part as well. 7.55 to go, and High Point leading by a dozen. 67-55. We'll be back with more of our coverage after this. Stay with us from the Deadman Center. They said not 14. They have yeah. 18 <laughs> offensive rebounds in this game. Crystal? Yeah, the coach, in summary, don't look at it as so far to go. One play at a time. Gets Got to get stops. That's what you're hearing in the huddle from Rafford's side. Obviously, there's a, a, a decent deficit when you look at a game that's been as close as this has been throughout. But that's something that they'll have to just chip away at one play at a time and make smart plays. Hamilton misses down low. Rebound by Walters. Kind of popped into his hands. Right side, Kenyon Giles with a shot fake. That's a, that's a good play there by Jeff and knowing the scouting report on him. And then an off-balance jumper short from Giles and a rebound by the Panthers. We know Radford's not going to get many, if any, second chances. Just three offensive rebounds the entire game. And this is now back-to-back -back games where the Highlanders have just been clobbered on the glass. And what's wild is Radford is second in rebounding margin in the conference. So it's not like High Point just beating up on a team that's not a good rebounding team. Radford has been throughout the season. Jiffa finally misses a jumper. Radford rebounds, 6.50 to go. Turner trailing for three. Got it. Good two-man play there. 67-58. Radford down by nine. And that's a big shot. You have a chance here, but you got to get it going on defense. Got to string together some stops. Fill up that shield. Huge bucket right there for Radford. 21 points for that man, Duke Miles. He gives it up left side to Jiffa. They've got a man wide open down low, and they're going to get an and one. I think it surprised Pablo DeZuba that he was that open and he laid it up and in the Maryland transfer he's just getting healthy for that team again and that's just another weapon that's coming in guy from Maryland and then Justin Archer's a strong defender so just the fact that he's able to get that off it's another weapon that he has coach Huss has coming in get more and more minutes as he gets healthy A rebound. You guys talked about rebounding and how Radford performs there. High Point is second in the conference right now for rebounds. Average rebounds per game. They average 41. Radford.
A little lower on the depth chart, number six in the conference. They average only 36 rebounds a game, but it's showing tonight. Whistle down on this end, and that means two free throws for Radford. That's the 10th team foul against High Point. In this game, the Panthers are 16 of 18 from the line. Radford, four of six. And it'll be DeAndre Pierce. He's been a little bit better from the line this season for Radford. Still under 50% overall, but we have conversation going on across the way at the scores table. Looks like we had a sub on a two-shot foul. So DeAndre on the line, Radford down 69-58 with 6.15 to go. Yeah, nice form there by the 6'10 post player. DeAndre Pierce, who's worked so hard on his game, leads the conference and block shots, just trying to work on the offensive end for him. And he's looked smooth on both of those charity tosses, 69-60. Here we see some pressure from Rafford. Something they haven't done is all too easy. I yeah. mean... <laughs> they beat it, and Miles goes up and lays it in. That's just too easy. 71 to 60. Duke Miles saw that he just had a clear shot to the lane, and he took it there. Nice bounce pass right side. More free throws coming as Walters to Pierce. Nicely done. Bodo Bodo with the foul. He's got three now. And that was a good foul there by Bodo Bodo. You know, stopped what would have been an easy two points. Good recovery. He really does move very well for a seven-footer. Free throw is good. About three in a row here when they need him the most from DeAndre Pierce. 71-67. And four for four. We talked about he's been improving from the line. All four of his points have come in the last 40 seconds from the line. And I think he's a guy that's probably the most improved player for Radford from the time they first stepped on the floor this season. 71-62, 5.33 to go here from the Deadman Center. And Duke Miles uh, draws a chase foul there. Huh? They were just trying to keep up with it. Couldn't do it. Team foul number six against Radford. Next one will put the Panthers back on the line. I'm just been impressed with Miles. He's just so under control at all times. He can play fast. He can play slow, but he's always under control. He's just going to be a menace this year in the Big South. Probably the front runner right now for uh, most valuable player. And now a holding foul. Boy, those are the ones that just drive you nuts, right, if you're Darius Nichols. Holding foul on the inbounds before they even tried to throw it in, and that's going to put them on the line. Wow. Yeah, that's a killer. So one and one here for Miles, an 86% free throw shooter coming into the ball game. And he missed it. Rebound taken by the Highlanders. Down by nine with the ball. Still plenty of time for Radford. Quan Smith goes to the goal. Got blocked and late whistle and a foul. And he'll be on the line shooting two. You look at Coach Huss again there, coaching him up, saying, you were there, you just brought your hands down a little bit, stay straight up. Yep, if he had stayed straight up, I don't think there's any way Quan Smith would have got that to the goal. So Quan Smith trying to tie his career high as a Highlander here with these two free throws. He had 24 points against Winthrop last year. And he makes the first, and it's 71-63. Bodo Bodo out for high point. Zuba back in. And there it is, 24 points for Laquan Smith. 71-64, Radford hitting their free throws when they need them. 
hanging around in this one with five minutes to go. Yeah, hanging around, still in striking distance, but again, you got to string stops together. Here's Benham. And now Jiffa. You got to defend without fouling as well. Miles scoops it up and off. They crash the glass, but Quan comes out of there with it. Quan, step back three, is Ooh, down and, and out. out. Ooh, that was a gigantic shot. You don't mind it at all, boy. Man. That's that's the kind of shot he likes on the run, and it was down in the cylinder and popped out. That would have brought Radford within four. It looked like Kamani Hamilton was trailing and almost got a block shot there. Oh, it's one of those that you're just in the wrong spot. You just get run into by the quicker ball handler. You see it a lot in basketball, but Jiffa, who has been a major difference maker in this basketball game, he's got 16 points on the line, shooting a one and one. 21 points is his high. He's now been in double figures. This is the 11th game. And he knocks down the free throw. 420 left, 72 64. <laughs> 73 64. 18 now for Jippa. Radford, not a team that typically plays with a lot of pace, but you got to get some pace here. Only four minutes left. Plenty of time, but. Not if you're using all 30 seconds on each possession. Giles at the right elbow, tosses it over to Quan Smith. Step back two, no. And the rebound, a couple Panthers were battling for it, and that cost them possession. That gets us to the under four media timeout. It's getting late for Radford, 3.54 to go, 73-64. High point trying to get a huge road win to open up conference play. Back with more of our coverage after this. Problem right there, just what you're saying. There's an inbounds play thrown up by Quan, no good. Rebound by Benham. And now you'll see High Point go into a little bit of maybe smart basketball. They won't go into a stall, but maybe a little bit of protection of that nine-point lead with 341 to go. 41 rebounds tonight I for the Panthers. Right. Benham, right elbow for three, misses. And there's Bodo Bodo. Another offensive nice rebound. Pass. They get it right back to Benham for the layup. 19 offensive rebounds tonight for the Panthers. It's the story of the basketball game. And Bodo Bodo, he is an all-conference caliber player as a freshman. He's he's not going to put up a lot of points, but what he does without the ball in his hands is impressive. And another miss and another gobbling up off the floor of the rebound by the Panthers. And now they really have the advantage in this one. Up by 11 with the ball, under three minutes to go. Mm. And another rim rattler, Bodo Bodo. And the Panthers lead by 13. Timeout by the Highlanders with 2.51 to go. Largest lead of the game for High Point. We'll keep it here, but this is the floating timeout that they call it 30. All right, so we'll take this one as well then. All right, we'll be back. High Point in command by 13 there by Hamilton getting him the ball. I've seen him get to touch it after he had the big assist on the previous play, and there he is getting on the floor. Radford gave it up. Jump ball, fortunately, will end up in Radford hands. Crystal Hubbard, one final report from you here tonight. Yeah, just one, one thing that stuck out to me that Coach Nichols said to his team, you know, he doesn't like the look on their faces. He doesn't like their body language. You know, despite where they are in the game, he still expects to see them at high energy, and I mean, this is it's still a doable game. Obviously, it's been a very tough go at it, but he uh, he definitely just doesn't like the body language or the facial expressions on his team at this point in the game. Checking the monitor. What are they doing over there? Looks like the officials are going over to see if maybe some extracurriculars. Something in the else pile. happened over there. 77-64. They gave the ball to Radford, correctly so, with the possession arrow, but not I, sure what this is now. I actually think Longwood Winthrop is in overtime. I think they're over there checking out the, the end of the Longwood <laughs> Winthrop game. I saw that's an OT. 
Should we go join them? Yeah, it's a big one. Asheville's already won. Presbyterian looks like they're going to win on the road. Yeah, they're looking at the clock is what they're doing here. For it should be a 20 though, right after the yeah the jump ball. jump ball. It should be a 20. I don't know why. So Truth Harris going to trigger the inbound. And even just getting the ball in underneath out of bounds has been tough tonight for Radford. Step back jumper for Kenyon Giles is good. That's a two. 77-66. Do they have enough stops left in them to make it interesting down the stretch? Again, that's going to require high point missing some free throws or giving you the ball, and I don't think this is the team that's going to do that. High point team with just four losses by a combined 16 points. They could have a much better record than 11 and four. That's just wild. They are picked seventh in the conference out of nine teams. Shows you what those preseason polls mean, yeah. huh? Do you vote on those, Rick? I do, but I had them higher than that. I will say that. You're just saying that. No. Because no, it's, it's confidential, isn't it? I will talk you to probably Mark. probably had them ninth. I will talk to Mark Simpson and we'll show you. Here's a deflection. Look at they end up with the basketball and then a foul. Oh my goodness, with a minute 42 to go. 77 66. I was keeping up with what they were doing in the offseason and Coach Huss, and I kept seeing all these guys they were adding and what, you know, who were they were coming from. And I'm thinking, wow, he, he did get a late start. You know, he mentioned that in our radio pregame that, you know, he was there a shot or two away from going to the Final Four with Creighton as an assistant last year and then takes the high point job and look what he has done and he still doesn't have a complete roster from the guys he recruited. Yeah, I loved in, in his pregame talked about probably missing my best player Liam McChesney. Yeah. Which is just wild. Yeah, McChesney a kid that they brought in. He's from Canada came from Illinois State and played a minute. I mean, when you throw in their non-conference schedule, how well they performed there again. You did the math earlier, 15 points from being undefeated against a pretty challenging schedule there. The way they've looked here tonight, well, that's a questionable call, I think. Giles going to get rewarded with three free throws here, 79-66. And then throw in how they're going to improve as these guys gel together again. It's... It's not like a video game where you just go sign a bunch of players and then they magically are one unit. They're going to keep getting better and then throw in that they play the conference tournament at high point this year. You know, the Radford women went on the road and knocked off high point in the counter, the women's game that they play on the road the same night. I, I wish they would I revisit that. that. Yeah, I wish they would revisit that. The women deserve their own night. I mean, they deserve to be highlighted. I don't like having a night taken away where you have a combined games going on. That's something they need to revisit. I'm surprised that it lasted more than one year. Yeah, because you, you hear the chatter in the stands of people that are asking what the Absolutely. school is and things like Absolutely. that. When otherwise, they, they probably wouldn't travel, but they'd at least be watching Absolutely. 79-68 after the Kenyon Giles free throws. And it's going to be interesting for Radford after this. They get a lot of time in the gym, and they had a game that was moved, chosen for a late night on national TV. Timeout will keep it here. 79-68, a minute 31 to go. And that's also something that, I mean, I understand the exposure is very important, right? You want to get your programs highlighted. It's on a national broadcast. But you're moving a game from a Wednesday to a Thursday. You're moving it from 7 to 9. And that road team, Radford in this case, at Longwood, has to stay out on the road and go straight from Farmville to South Carolina because they have a 2 o'clock tip-off the following Saturday. That's a tough turnaround. I mean, very tough turnaround. it's just very difficult. Well, back to the fact at hand here, this high point team, as impressive as we were talking about, and when I talked with Coach Huss, I was telling Cole, I said, well, that, that's a guy that you can tell he's got a plan and he is executing it. And he's still feeling his way around this league. 
They're facing the Radford pressure. Oh, Ooh, and they yeah. were bailing it out, and then a foul, and then I believe a foot, an inadvertent foot, caught Daquan Smith in the head. He has a oh, my goodness gracious. It was an accidental thing. Quan looked like he got kicked right in the face, and he is down. He got called for the foul, and then he got kicked in the chops. He had to shake that off a little bit. No blood, I see. He says, I'm okay. We'll check this out one more time. This was a dangerous play. Yeah, let's see this about here. His leg, too, but he's fine. That was kind of a... Watch the foot come up right there. See right oh, yeah. there? Inadvertent. Just one of those things that happen when guys get on the floor going after the basketball. Just a good hard play, and fortunately, Quan's okay, and, and Jiff is okay. You're right. I'll tell you what, Rafford has struggled tonight, but the Quan Smith certainly hasn't. He is. He's been on fire. How about Kaza Jiffa? You talked about yeah. it, Cole, from Daytona State. I mean, he's going to add, if he makes these free throws, this will be 19 and 20 points for him tonight. Comes off the bench and doesn't miss a beat. And there, there's not many teams he wouldn't be in the starting lineup for. And Correct. It, it's nice to have a guy like that, that that comes off on the bench. And first of all, there's no drop off, but all, he brings something. Makes them both. And you just kind of knew he would. 81 68, a minute 23 to go. Kenyon Giles going baseline, Jiffa guarding. And the last Great thing they want to do is foul, and they're going to get called for the foul. Yeah, that's tough on Jiffa there. I, not sure what you can do in that situation, but that's the way it is around college basketball. Sure. They're going to call that almost every time against the defense, and Kenyon's back on the line. He's getting the line a lot late, but it's too little too late tonight for Radford. Yeah, I think Coach Huss is right on this one. That was pretty good defense there by Jeffa. Free throw is no good. Be taking a look at our Hercules Tires strong move of the game here momentarily. One of two, 81 69. A lot to work on here during this time off for Radford to get ready for that tough stretch of now two games in three days on the road at Longwood and Winthrop. They're playing tonight, as Cole mentioned, and it's been a back and forth affair and there's a whistle there's a foul on kg and for high point it's a much different story they get home games against gardner webb and asheville and here comes our hercules tire strong move of the game and it's going to be the steal here by miles and this terrific play cole just kind of his jaw dropped when he saw that one i'm having like me back in the day Rick. well it really did that hang time i thought you meant the defender watching <laughs> the guy go by Ooh, oh that might have been more accurate <laughs> <laughs> Makes another free throw, 82-69. Well, an impressive victory tonight for a high point. They go to 12-4. and four. More importantly, they go to 1-0, and oh and they get a road conference win. A gold brick in the wagon, if you will. Former Radford coach Mike Jones referred to them that way. That's how valuable they are. And they're going to get one here tonight in Coach Huss's first Big South game on the road. And there's a new career high for Quan. It's a nice side story, but he won't care about that. 83-71. He's got 26. Here's Hamilton with 50 seconds. And Radford not going to foul. They're just going to try to play defense here because Darius Nichols knows they can't catch up. And there was a accidental, looks like a kind of a flyby by Daquan Smith. He wasn't trying to foul him, but the call goes against him. And now you have Jeff on the line. He's already got a new career high. He's got 22 tonight. His previous high was 21. Presbyterian has won. They've beaten Charleston Southern 68-61. Jeff makes another free throw. They've made their free throws. They're getting to the line again. Outscoring Radford it was one of the areas we highlighted, and we've Talked about it all night. The rebounds have been just absolutely killer tonight against Radford. And you credit High Point. You credit for the way they just brought it to Radford here tonight on the road. 85-71. Long jumper's no good. Benham has it. No fouls. And they can't hold it here because there's about four and a half seconds. But the High Point Panthers are going to come to the Dedman Center and get an enormous victory. 
Jeep right. yep. was going to dribble it out. Radford's fine. They have some things to work on. Only one game in conference play, but they need to fix it quick because you know this conference, every game's a battle. And again, shout out to High Point coming on the road against the team that was picked near the top of the Big South, getting a big win. Very good basketball team. So they ran it out. Radford will do the same here. They not going to try to get a shot up. Our final score is going to be 85-71. Thanks to the crew. Great job here tonight. Brian Yohe, our director. Thanks to Crystal Hubbard for all of her terrific reporting. Cole Wilder, as always, thanks to you. Thank you, Rick. No, Does no. anybody ever thank you? No, no, they don't. No. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> thank, thank you, Rick, Crystal. Appreciate that. And thanks for your sparkliness tonight. It really it, it helped me out tonight. Helped me get through. Hey, they say shiny new year. And there it is. The inbounds, the horn. 85-71. The Highlanders knocked, or have to now to regroup. They get knocked off on their home floor as Coach Huss and the Panthers go to 12-4, 1-0 in the league. Radford falls to 10-6, 0-1.